Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Season 4, Episode 14, Philly Vanilli, because puns. Uh, this is the episode in which the Pony Tones, which I think were actually referenced before now, but it's the first time they've actually been introduced properly, are singing, and you know there's this whole thing they're doing, and they got to sing for events. But then, poor, uh, uh, poor Applejack, wow, poor Big Mac, loses his throat, loses his voice, can't sing, Flutter Guy has to sing in his place, yada yada yada, moving on. Um... So, <clears throat> before we move forward, of course, we will go ahead and read Fluttershy's entry here. I don't know if you... God, her handwriting is adorable! This is like the neatest, most perfect cursive. How did they do this? I mean, it's a font. Yeah, it's it's a font, I can tell. But damn! Anyway, sorry, moving on. I can't do Flutter Guy's voice. It's too it's too deep. I, I actually don't have that deep of a voice. I wish I had that deep of a voice. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. You can kind of see it there. It's not going to stop being fuzzy. But like to contrast, that's Sweetie Belle's font. And that's Fluttershy's. Look at that. It's really nice. It's, it's very proper cursive, right? Anyways. <sighs> Dear Diary. I don't know if you know this, but I'm terribly shy. It's true. I don't like to speak up, or say things, or be noticed, or have any pony's eyes on me, or draw attention to myself, or contradict some pony, or cause a ruckus, or be a bother, or be a standout in a crowd. But I do love to sing. Oh goodness, it makes me so very happy. But it's not something I would ever, ever, ever want to do in front of every pony. That would be the most frightful of frightful things. Even worse when staring down a... Even worse than staring down a dragon. So I've only sung for animals in the privacy of my own home, where I feel very, very safe. Then I accidentally discovered something I never, ever expected. Not only do I love to sing, I love singing in front of every pony. I love hearing their applause and their praise. I love to... perform. I was too scared to actually you do this in my true voice in front of every pony, so I had to use a false one while hiding. And that's so very silly. Sometimes being afraid can stop you from doing something that you love, but hiding behind these fears means that you're only hiding from your true self. It's much better to face those fears so you can shine and be the best pony you can possibly be. So this episode... sucks. No, uh, it, sorry. What I meant to say is... This episode has the audio volume. I'm using a different method of getting music, and I want. I'm, I it's a different audio volume thing, so literally different. Question mark. I need feedback. I don't hear it. I hear the song. It's a little louder than before. Okay, I, I can turn it down a bit more. I'll turn it down a bit more. How about here? Oop, hang on. There. How about here? This good? We good? I'll just talk a little bit in my completely normal voice. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the destruction of all of humanity! It's actually, we're going to be turned into ponies. Everyone's going to be turned into ponies. Mine will be bald, naturally. This episode is by Amy Keating Rogers. Uh, she is, I think, as of this exact episode. Nope, I'm wrong. She is, as of this exact episode, the second most prolific uh, of the various writers. The only one who beats her is Megan McCarthy, who has her beaten by two. <sighs> Let's just get this out of the way. Poison Joke, Fluttershy being a great singer, Crazy Cat Lady, Cute Sanera, Zap Apples. That's five co continuity counters. I'm just going to smash those out really quick here. There were quite a few, and I wanted to keep track just separately. We're actually this much. I haven't been keeping that up to date, apparently. <laughs> Listen, the manatees... Well. <clears throat> so, opening happens. This is an interesting song. Oh, gotcha. Uh... Eh. 
Ah, whatever. Screw it. All right, Sean, what's your argument? I'm ready. I'm ready. I like the song, too. It's just not what I was expecting from it. I bought the rest of the Stellaris soundtrack, if you're wondering what the heck's going on here. But unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to rip it all. So I actually have Stellaris up in the background. And I'm just playing the music in Stellaris. So. Yeah. Anyways. Mm. Remind me, Sean, how do they reference Mare Duel? So the episode opens, Fluttershy singing. There's a jackalope. They all hear her singing. Oh my god! We're so shocked at how good of a singer you are. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Where's my dice? Yeah, I didn't know if it had all the new songs, though, because there's the soundtrack, but then, like, some of the DLCs actually have, you know, new music that they add. Like, there's some songs here I don't have locally. Anyways. So, uh... First of all, Fluttershy uh, has sung before. Twilight does say I've never seen, heard you sing solo like that. But it's just, it's a little bit weird that they've never managed to stumble onto this before. Especially since, again, they act like they're so blown away by how good of a singer is she is solo when she's already a good singer. And that's already an established thing. I mean, she had a duet song with frickin' Rainbow Dash, which is actually among my favorite songs to date. That would be, uh, made the best pet win, if you're wondering. Oh yeah, I need to put Find the Music, don't I? There we go. So, honestly, and I know this sounds weird, but I actually kind of want to give that a counter continuity. Counter. It's also the first ding against this episode. It's just a little bit of a, huh? It's also so unnecessary. See, let me, let me explain what I mean by this. It's unnecessary because they don't need to be so totally blown away by it as if they've never heard it before. They could just be like, hey, Fluttershy, wow, that was incredible. You are still an amazing singer. <laughs> right? Remove the shock and replace it with, you know, praise and the structure of the episode doesn't really change. Yeah, it, it, it basically is a form of as you know, which doesn't really work there. Or yeah, they could have just said, have you been practicing? That sounds even better than before. You know, they, they could they could mention how she's been getting better at it or her, how her solo voice is getting better or whatever, right? And this is, this is why things like this piss me off so much in fiction. This happens all the time whenever I'm analyzing television especially is it's just a tiny issue that could be very easily smoothed over. But they don't. So it's just... It's like staring at a completely flat... Like they've just freshly paved this asphalt, right? But there's one gap right there. And it would take no effort to fix that gap. It would just be like... And then it's done. But they just leave it there. And so you see this perfectly smooth, well-done road. And then there's this... Blah, right there, and that just drives me batty. <laughs> Moving on. I'm, I'm trying to build up to why I don't like this episode, by the way, so hear me out for a second. This leads me to the next point I have to say. Fluttershy is a Disney princess. No, I'm, I'm kind of kidding, but if you think about all the requirements for a Disney princess, the only one she doesn't have is that her parents are still alive. And sadly, so is her brother. But... If it wasn't for that, total Disney princess. Just saying. She has parents, yep. She has parents and they're alive. That is the only requirement she doesn't match. I just find that amusing. Pseudo-magical powers, friend all around her, uh, totally capable in a crunch, needs to rely on others most of the time in order to get things done. Singing. Singing with animals. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, no. <clears throat> Anyways. This then leads to something. I kept track. I like to call this Pinky Screws Things Up. So, um, just for audible effect. Pinky Screws Things Up. 
First thing she does, and I, I, they're just going to stare at you, judging you, jealously noting how they could be doing a much better job than you. And if, if only it was them, and then the first time you make the slightest mistake, they'll jump all over you and tear you limb from limb, and you'll be so humiliated you can never come back to Ponyville again. Pinky. Now, ignoring the obvious thing that that just irritates the ever-living crap out of me, uh, I want to give that a counter continuity. Can I go ahead and say that? Now, you're probably thinking, what? Why? Well, two reasons. First of all, I've been pretty harsh about Pinky and praising of Pinky throughout the course of this show because when she's written well, she's awesome and she's hilarious. And when she's, when she's written badly, she's aggravating as crap. Furthermore, again, to, to really make my point clear, in my opinion, almost all the times when she's written badly is when it's basically out of character. I want to remind you that Rainbow Dash was going to prank Fluttershy. You remember that? All the way back in season one or two. It was pretty early on. And Pinky was the one who was like, no, 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 we can't. That's Fluttershy. I mean, there's other examples, but that was the first one that came to my mind immediately, is that Pinky was sufficiently cognizant of Fluttershy's fragile nature to understand not to do something like that. So for her to go so thoroughly, ridiculously overboard with this is effectively out of character, especially since, and I hate to point this out as well, but in many other episodes and future episodes, one of Pinkie Pie's biggest character traits is that she knows people. She keeps notes on things people like and don't like. She has a freaking bat cave. I'm not making this up. We'll see it in the future. So the idea that she just randomly decides to completely do something that would so thoroughly screw with Fluttershy is, in my opinion, immensely out of character. This is outright character assassination. Yeah, it's the cup cave. So, that's another one for the counter continuity counter there. Yeah, yeah exactly, we outs. She goes full Starfleet Admiral in this episode, and it's aggravating. So, <clears throat> Pinky screws things up. Counter one, we already did the count. Having said that, I do want to mention something. It's pretty legit, isn't it? What she says. In fact, it's so legit that I find myself wondering if it's being spoken either from personal experience or from uh, victim experience. Because one of the things I've noticed is that a lot of people who watch TV or music or any creative work have absolutely no idea what goes into making that work and tend to be very judgmental and very jealous and think they could do better, right? And then get to the point where, oh, if I'll just I'll jump over every little niggling detail in the episode that's wrong. Wait. So I have to make fun of myself here. But you do know what I mean. I'm sure you do. Um, ironically, I don't have that problem. I have the opposite problem. Everything I do is trash. But I have seen people who have done that type of... It's a form of prejudice, basically, which I know that sounds like a weird thing, but prejudgment, it's what it is. It's a form of prejudgment. It's a form of walking in and saying, humph, and looking down at someone, and, and, and like uh, Pinky says, being jealous of them, and in that jealousy, looking down upon them or trying to hurt or harm them. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty toxic attitude to have, and I have seen it happen many times, personally as well as more distantly. I, uh, as you might imagine, I have gotten this myself as a YouTuber and a streamer because, funnily enough, most people have absolutely no idea what it takes to be a YouTuber streamer full time. And so I get, I get suggestions, you know, oh, you should just do this. It's incredibly lazy that you don't do this. It speaks to how much you don't care about actually being a decent YouTuber that you don't do this, and so forth and so on. Direct quotes, by the way. Yeah, I feel like... Uh, yeah, I don't know why I don't make more content, Shikor. I should post more content. That's why I lost that one patron. Never forget that one. That one was just funny. 
doesn't release enough content. This again, see, part of the reason I mentioned that this is probably from some experience is you remember the episode back with, uh, it was earlier this season, uh, During Dew, when During Dew was introduced, and there was Rainbow Dash who went on that spiel of how you should spend every waking, thinking, breathing second working on the new work. Yeah, I feel like there's some experience going into some of these lines here. Just a vibe. Oh, hey, I just lost uh, I lost two patrons recently. One was because I wasn't posting enough content. I'm not joking. The other was apparently I've been calling people retard regularly, which I don't actually have memory of doing. So I don't know what to make of that. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't use that word. That's why I'm confused. I've said redunculus a few times. Which is ridiculous plus... I, I don't actually know what that means. Maybe it doesn't mean literally. I mean, maybe? I don't know, Johnny. Anyways, I, I should stop looking at people's negative comments while I'm reading about MLP. It's not the, not the good mindset to be in there. Anyways, let's move on. Let's move on. The next thing I want to talk about, and this is one of the things the episode does very, very right, uh, and one of the things I liked about the episode is Fluttershy and her stage fright. You ever have stage fright? No. Uh, Lefex. It probably won't be done until Wednesday at the latest. Stage fright is... It's a weird thing to explain to people who don't have it. And you might think, Laura, you don't have stage fright. I kind of do. So obviously, I'm sitting here talking to however many hundreds of people every single day of my life, and I have actually performed in theatrical works before. I, I've been on camera. I was on camera back in television. You know, I so you're like, what do you have stage fright with? Well, I have very specific things where I am sufficiently humiliated, embarrassed, or ashamed that I don't want to be seen, to give you a specific uh, phrase on that one. Uh, there's a reason why you only see about from the chest high, because I have a gut. Now, I can say that because you don't actually see it, but it is a point of such humiliation and embarrassment to me that I don't want to be seen like that. I actually dress very specifically when I go out to hide most of my body. In fact, I look bigger than I am when I go out and about because I'm wearing so many layers and specific styles of clothing to hide what I look like because it bothers me that much. There are times when I've turned off the webcam because it's bothered me too much to be seen. Not a joke. This is as close to stage fright as I have. I didn't even dance at my sister's wedding, and I wanted to, because I was I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't go out on the dance floor and be visible. So I kind of get it, personally. But the, wor the, the worst part is there's that sense of... There, there's a point where it just gets goes into lockdown, you know what I mean? Where you don't really have a good answer, right? There's not really a good response you don't really have a good argument it's just no come on no i mean if you don't no you know what i mean and that's very much how fluttershy acts here now the funny thing is they don't really try to convince her too hard that's actually a nice tidbit if i might be so bold i haven't been able to see the whole thing thrill effects no I don't know why I'm saying Threll. It's actually Thruff... Le... Lefexel? Lefexel? We'll go with Lefexel. Uh, yeah, they're very respectful about it. They just say, no. We're not going to do this. We're not going to push you into it. You're not comfortable with it? No problem. There's also a nice little touch there, too. There's this bit where Fluttershy... They're singing for the first time. Oh, yeah, by the way, song counter. They're singing for the first time. And practicing in Fluttershy is... Starts to sing along until she notices that some people are walking by. 
And then she stops and looks embarrassed. Now that one I relate to completely. I actually like to sing, would you believe it? Now I'm extremely out of practice. I don't even remember my breathing exercises anymore. But I will clamp down hard if I realize that I am singing around someone else. Unless it's a song that, you know, I actually feel comfortable singing, of which there's like two ever. You know, I can sing Jekyll and Hyde right now, but that, that's about all I got. What type of singing? Well, I just mentioned Jekyll and Hyde. <laughs> uh, also, the song from uh, BFA is another good example of that. But I bet some of you know what that feels like, right? To, to really throw this into to perspective, how many of you like to sing in the car, either with music playing or just on its own? And then when you pull up to, like, a stoplight... You just kind of stop. Like, you just kind of start lowering your volume and like, well, okay, hang on. Because they might hear you, right? They might actually hear you. So you got to pull it down and just kind of wait for the light to go green. Then the light goes green, the music, very appropriate musical cue, and then you just start singing again. I know inside no one must ever know the, oh, the sorry tale of Edward Hyde and those who died. No one must ever know. Right? As I say, I bet several of you know exactly what I mean by that. This is one of the reasons why this episode is still good for me. Despite the fact that I don't like it. Because there's some really excellent human moments with Fluttershy. Which, shocking, most of the Fluttershy moments tend to be very relatable and human. So... Um... Spike, does this count as a Spike crush? Now, I don't think it does, personally. But Spike rushes onto stage and says, Rarity, you are amazing! And he, she's like, well, what about the other ones? Meh. I don't think that's a Spike crush. I think that's just a gag. Feel free to argue against me on this point. I obviously have a bias here. I want to destroy the Spike crush! But I, I yeah, no, I, I don't think this is a blush. I don't think this, he didn't actually be like, you're so good, or anything like that. It was just, ah, oh, that was a really good job, Rarity! You know, very straight, straight voiced. We know what Spike sounds like when he's crushing. There's a different voice she uses for it. Yeah, the Ponytones outfits were pretty cool, too. I had to look up the names of the other two, by the way. It's uh, Torch Song and Toe Tapper. So that's... I'm, I'm going to go... Unless anyone gives me a pretty good argument, I'm going to say this doesn't count as a Spike Crush. And, and I don't just mean that because of bias. I really don't think this counts. It's a gag. It's a gag based on the Spike Crush, but it's still a gag. But bow ties are cool. So... <clears throat> so the first major issue... Actually, this is my second major issue of the episode. The first major issue I have with the episode is... Pinkie Pie, because she's terrible in this episode. But the second major issue I have is, I actually really like acapella. In fact, I would love to sing acapella myself. One of the things I've been wanting to do, which I will never have time to do, is to make my own acapella songs. Uh, the reason I will never do it is because Smooth McGroove came into existence and completely schooled me. Like, anything I would do would be nowhere near the level of quality of what that man can manage. By the way, if you haven't heard Smooth McGroove stuff, let me just plug him really quick, because he does some really good acapella. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> that being said, the song just kind of keeps playing. It's the same song. There's a couple additional lyrics added. They do some tricks, but it's just... A decent chunk of the episode is just the song. We talked about that, didn't we, Shikor? It's true, though. I'm, I'm crap. I'm garbage. Find the music. Find the music in you. Now. <clears throat> so, the night immediately prior to this was... Uh, turkey... It was the turkey call. Which, sure. I know, his cat is so cool. Um, by the way, hi, King Dunlop. Yeah, very bad planning to have the turkey call right before this event. But then... Pinkie Pie screws things up number two. Because she's the one who basically insisted on pushing him for the turkey call. And then, this is even worse, 
when he lost his voice, which screws up the event, and lost his title, she jumps by to rub it in. Now, I get it. That's just a light gag, but what should have happened, and again, it, small change would fix this. She's super happy, bouncing around, lost the title. You know, does the gobble. And then they're like, oh, we have to cancel. There should have been a shot of Pinky being like, oh, no. Because she should care about that. Because she's Pinkie Pie. <sighs> Moving on. So, Zakora has to get on a stool in order to be able to see Big Mac. That actually kind of amused me. Um, and Fluttershy can't bring herself to sing on stage, even for the animals. Again, makes perfect sense. Like, like I was talking about earlier, about the, sh the fright thing. The, the, no, no. Right? Makes perfect sense. I'm completely with it. But then Rarity, the creative one, obviously, comes up with the solution. We'll give you the, f the joke, and you'll be off stage. Well, actually, Zakora came up with the idea for the joke. But Rarity comes up with the idea. We'll have you sing off stage. Big Mac will lip sync. You'll be singing in the safety and privacy of your own home, effectively. And we'll still get to do the conference. Of course, Rarity would come up with that option. Now... Uh, yeah, exactly, Savicom. It, it, as soon as it was brought to her attention, it should have bothered her. That's that's why this bothers me. So yeah, this is a great compromise and actually pretty smart. I hate to nitpick yet again, but I wish there was one tiny thing. Don't even have to call attention to it. Just one additional thing would have been added and would have really smoothed this over for me. Imagine if the whole time when Big Mac... Excuse me, when Big Mac is singing, you know he's got that bow tie on? Imagine if it was glowing, probably with Twilight, I'd say, with Twilight's magic. And Twilight's just, you know, visible in the background kind of somewhere, and her horn is glowing. That's all it would have taken for this, this problem to be smoothed over for me. It's a very minor problem. It doesn't actually matter. But I only point it out because that's the kind of stuff I like. Tiny little touches and details that help flesh out the world and the, the consequence of how things work. If you're not catching it, the point is, she's basically... Uh, serving as like a microphone or a speaker actually excuse me a speaker for Fluttershy's voice onto Big Mac so it sounds like it's coming from Big Mac uh, I don't think it's been before actually we will see the speaker magic later this season but I don't think they've actually shown it before yeah Twilight has very much been not in the season so far that'll change obviously but anyways it, again it's not a nitpick really it's not a thing that is, is in detriment to the episode. It just would have been kind of cool if they added a little nuance like that. So, then the song plays again. And then Pinkie Pie screws things up. We're up to three now, by the way. She jumps in, and Rarity has to literally... There's the God. It drives me batty, because what happens is Fluttershy is quietly coming out the back, and Pink is like, "Hey, what are you doing?" In this really intrusive manner, which is already not really in, in favor of that, but it's also just kind of screwing things up. And Rarity has to rush over, like, "No, no, it's okay, it's okay." This then leads to the bulk of the episode, where I'm, I'm just going to kind of barrel through this. Um, although, fake, fun little fact: so the little girl comes by with her little doggy. And the big Pegasi guy comes on the dad with the, the, I guess that's supposed to be French accent. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. That guy, that's Big Mac. That's Big Mac's voice actor for the Pegasus dad. I call him Pegasus dad because that's what his entry in the, in the voice acting cast is. Pegasus dad. Anyways. So. Then the song plays. Then the song plays. Then the song plays. Have I made my point about this yet? These are separate iterations, by the way, of the song playing. Because what then happens is the song then plays... Zipper Well was the kid's name, that's right. The song then plays for an extended period of time across multiple... Uh, like, basically a montage. Now, there's some decent visual gags here. She sings inside of a barrel. And underwater. And outside a window. Okay, sure. But yeah, I do have to mention, 
It is nice that Rarity never once pushes Fluttershy into this. Or anything, actually. It is, in fact, Fluttershy who insists to Rarity. Now, this then leads to the final showcasing. Okay, I'll do this one final show. Have you ever had something that you really love doing that you just can't do in public? Don't say sex or I'll kill you. Like... Exercise is a good one for me. I actually like exercising. Uh, it, it's, it keeps my energy up. Yeah, you know, I, I enjoy having control over my own body and learning that precision and learning how to push myself, right? I basically can't exercise in front of other people. Like, I have done so in the past, but it is very difficult for me to do. Can't, can't, can't do that in front of others. I suppose I could say Mega Man Challenge Runs. I've actually done quite a few Mega Man challenge runs off the camera. My Switch is loaded up for Mega Man Collection 1 right now. And there's these challenge runs, and you have to go through a set of specific stages or bosses, or whatever, and there's a timer running all the time. And I've gotten gold. I, like, I could, I could show you. I could show you the records. And I could show you the results, which I'm okay with showing you. But I don't want to show you the attempts, because what happens is... Nope! Restart. Ah, screwed that up. Restart. Ah! Restart. Too embarrassed for that, right? And that's kind of the general aspect of what Fluttershy is going through here. The, uh, the eyes on me, FF8 reference. Now, oh my god, Sean, no. <laughs> the reason I bring this up is what happens is probably one of the best scenes in the, in the episode, in my opinion. And I know that sounds horrifying. Because what happens is Fluttershy is revealed. She's so into the music, she starts dancing. Oh yeah, dancing. I love dancing, by the way. I'm actually pretty good at dancing. You'll never see me do it. So, she starts dancing along to the music and actually knocks over the, the thing and everyone sees her. And what's the first thing that happens? Applause. Of course there's applause. It's Fluttershy. And she's a great singer. So they're just like, yeah, woo! What's Fluttershy's reaction? Fluttershy's reaction is astonishingly well-crafted. Like, it's, it, it's probably one of the better... We actually talked about this in Hurricane Fluttershy, too. It's probably one of the better visual and audio presentations of a panic attack I've seen in, in, in recent memory. It's right up there with uh, Celeste, which did a similar thing. Like, you hear their, their, their cheering and their applause kind of descend and just warp and twist into something that sounds just like a non-stop scream in the background. Really well done portrayal of that. And she, of course, like you do when you panics, freezes up and then runs. Panic. Yeah, it's 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 really, really well done, really well presented. What happens immediately after that is the second best scene in the episode, which I'm not gonna. D well, I guess I could recite it for you. Give me a second. Uh, I think I have the recitation like right here. Turkey call. Yep. Trash your voice. Yep. Zakora remedy. Yep. Not quick enough. Yep. Need a deep voice. Yep. Poison joke. Yep. Flutter guy. Yep. Better now. Yep. And she's living her dream in the shadows because she couldn't bring herself to become to the spotlight. Yep. It's a really simple joke, but it's really well done. So, props there. Uh, so, this, this then leads to, Fluttershy's still in the midst of kind of freaking the hell out. And this naturally leads to Pinkie Pie screwing things up. In my actual notes, I actually wrote down, word for word, Jesus Christ, Pinkie. 
I don't even have anything to add at this point. She's just she's just continuing to hit the same note and pushing her way too hard. So then Pinky, you know, there's running and there and everyone else is trying to understand. Now this is actually a nice tidbit here. Um, first of all, can we please stop running? Which is a nice bit. But second of all, of course they don't understand why Fluttershy is freaking out and panicking. The kind of, that sort of social anxiety is ultimately, a, has the same vibes of, if not the literal definition of, an irrational fear. And it's hard to really understand an irrational fear if you have not felt it. If you don't actually understand what that feels like. This is why I've been trying to relate this to you guys by using real life examples. Because I can't explain to you what an irrational fear feels like. Right? Like, you, you can't really explain it to someone. It doesn't really work that way. It's just something that kind of emotionally locks you down, affecting the way you think. By the way, hi, Danky. So, they all try to understand by... And, and the funny thing is, they, they're like, what, what did you hate about it? The cheering fans? The wondrous applause? Like, there's just this, this disbelief in their voices as they're like, what was the issue here? What's the, what's the friggin' problem, right? Now, it's also worth noting, however, that none of her friends really judge her for what she went through. None of them are trying to come down at her or making fun of her. They're just trying to reach out to her and understand, which is a good touch. And they also try to convince her that it wasn't that bad. Now, that's an interesting point. Because they succeed partially. And I think that's one of the reasons why this episode gets a bit more of a pass in my book. Because she's willing to sing in front of her friends. In front of people she knows, in front of people she trusts. But she's not willing to go on tour yet. Now, first of all, that makes perfect sense. But second of all, that's much better than what television usually does. I mean... I can actually name episodes of Star Trek where someone has an issue or a phobia which they just kind of get over by the end of the episode. Yeah. Oh yeah, and one more playing of the song. Guess we gotta get one more iteration of that song in there. <sighs> yeah, they also gave her... That's a good point, Savakam. They gave her the, uh, the, the, the part that's easiest to sing for that section. So, on the whole, I, I still don't really like this episode all that much. The Fluttershy bits and the Humanity bits do help elevate it a bit. There's enough uh, personalization, there's enough human characterization there, and analysis of that kind of social anxiety and that kind of irrational fear that helps elevate the episode. But the, the Pinkie Pie stuff and the just logical disconnection of several elements of it really drag it down. I think I might give this one a below average. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? That's also true, We Outs. A lot of people who go into television and who are in charge of television are massively extroverted because that's what you kind of need to be to, to go in that. And uh, they uh, tend to see extroversion as a good thing. And thus, introversion is almost always portrayed as a bad thing, even though... Listen, Savakam, you'll never understand what it's like to, um, um... To speedrun Super Metroid! You're out of the club. Turn in your badge. You're a loose cannon. Oh, my God. I'm really torn on this one, honestly. Uh, let's call it a wash. Let's call it average. 
Because it wasn't good. And I, I'm sorry, you can't convince me to, to put it good. You can put it as good. That's up to you. But... No, no. I'm, I'm gonna make it green. I'm sorry. I'm gonna make it green. I changed my mind. Changed my mind. Below average. What color of green am I using for that? It doesn't matter. There's so many greens on this stupid thing. That. There we go. Green. Because the problem is... I'm reminded of... of a lot of Star Wars, if I'm being honest. A lot of Star Wars uh, media tends to be cherry pick the good parts out because the rest of this is irritating and stupid, right? A lot of Star Wars media is like that. And that's a lot of how this episode felt. Oh god, I know the one you're talking about, Dan Key. Yeah, Ronan. He's <laughs> the big... I, I, I feel like they did that specifically to play on the character. You know, Ronan, big, strong, super doom death guy. Freaking the heck out. They did a good job with it, though. Stargate Atlantis is a good damn show. I hope to do a streamination series on that at some point. But that's going to be, like, next year. The earliest, like I said before. Anyways, that is it for this episode. Let me go ahead and check the thing, because I'm pretty sure next week... Next week is Twilight Time, which is a good episode about social pressure and politics, believe it or not. And it ain't easy being breezies, which... We'll talk about when we get there. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to preface that one too much. Um, so either way, I'm going to chop off. Reminder: We do have the Star Trek game tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, I will not be continuing Last of Us Two today. That'll be continuing tomorrow at 10 a.m. EST. So, hope to see you around, guys.